Rally is all about getting between two points on a given route as fast as possible. It is a test of a car's performance and the raw talent of the drivers. Thrown into the mix are the demands and challenges of the route itself. The sixth round of the 2010 KCB Kenya National Rally Championship was the epitome of all of this and the outcome of the KCB SNL Mortgages Rally would favor those who were willing to push their cars to the limit and then hold it there the longest. Um, we're taking the rally back to the old days with longer stages, uh, but it will favor the people who, who dare to put their foot down and um, maybe take some risks. During the break between rallies, the final round of the FIA African Rally Championship had been held in Zimbabwe. Following a string of wins on the ARC circuit, Jamie White and Phil Arkenall had already won the championship and cemented this by also winning the Zimbabwe Challenge. This was their home event, which had taken 15 years to conquer. Oh, happy days, I mean, now. First Zimbabwean, I'm over the moon about it. But it all starts back here again next year, so we'll see what happens. The Zimbabwe Challenge also included the Africa shootout of the Pirelli sponsored competition to unearth new young talent. Chase Atwell from Zimbabwe was declared the winner and now has the chance of becoming a future World Rally Champion. Conrad Rautenbach debuted the new WRC Ford Fiesta S2000. Whilst it didn't last the distance, it did prove that it will be a formidable player in the 2011 World Rally Championship. Kenya's hopes in the Zimbabwe Challenge lay with Quinton Mitchell, who debuted his Subaru N16. He finished third and will now be taking on the Kenya Rally Championship, commencing with the next round in Mombasa. Competitors in the KCB SNL Mortgages Rally made their way to the pre-event check of the cars at the National Oil Fuel Station on Helselassie Avenue in the heart of Nairobi. There were no favorites for victory, although the competition was expected to be tight between the front runners, including Lee Rose, Carl Tundo, and Ian Duncan, with others more than capable of pulling surprises out of the bag. Baldev Chaga was lying second in the championship, and only a win would improve his chances. We've actually got a new computer system in the car. It seems to be working slightly better than it has been. So if I can get half a second a kilometer out of it, then I think we're, we're in the game again. The man he needed to beat was Alistair Kavanagh, but he was not looking forward to the many fast jumps on the event after doing the gorge swing at Victoria Falls. So I think I've either cracked or, or torn something and there's going to be quite sore tomorrow, I think. I mean, this, this route tomorrow is full of jumps. Yeah, no, I'm dreading it. I had, to take, I had to strap them up today. I'm going to have to strap them up again tomorrow. And take a load of painkillers and just see what happens. But it, it's, it's not going to be pleasant, that's for sure. <laughs> With all the formalities completed, the cars headed to the Kenya Motor Sports Club, the host club organizing the event, where they were held in Park for May overnight. The following morning, the rally cars joined other road users as they headed in convoy, 20 kilometers out of Nairobi, to the small town of Kitengela. The KCB Kitengela branch would be the backdrop to the ceremonial start. 46 cars had entered, and whilst they waited to be flagged away, it was an opportunity to meet the high-profile VIPs, including the Assistant Minister for Youth Affairs and Sport. We want to recognize the very important effort that the Kenya Commercial Bank has put in uh, making this competition a reality throughout the years. Ian Dunkett and Amos Sludge had been drawn first, driving the National Oil Nissan Patrol. They were making a return having missed the last event due to an injury. Ah! 
The route was made up of five stages amounting to 164 kilometers of competitive motoring. Stages 2 and 3 were repeated, which meant the crews had to tackle the longest stage of the rally twice. At 60 kilometers, it was also a test of endurance. Ian Duncan and Amos Lutz were the first to face the stages, knowing that if they were to stand any chance on the fast open roads, they would have to drive on the limit. The patrol proved to be even quicker than the group ends, and they immediately set the early pace, faster through the first 30 km stage by 26 seconds. They lost to Kavanaugh on stage 2, but still held onto the lead. The first section was not considered to be technical, but it still managed to claim six cars, all forced into an early retirement. The first to go were Carl Tundo and Tim Jessup, who broke a drive shaft on the start line. They were out before their rally had even started. We literally counted down, five, four, three, two, one, let out the clutch, bang, turn around, <laughs> go home. Lee Rose and Piers Dakin, who are always a threat for victory, made it a bit further, but only by 6 kilometers. Whilst going flat out at well over 160 kilometers per hour, the gear linkage broke. The selector pin on the top of the gearbox broke, so, and uh, sadly it broke when we were going third, fourth, and it broke through neutral. Simon Sharp and Keith Henry were debuting their 4.3-litre supercharged home-built hybrid, but never got the chance to realise its potential when the engine blew within the first 10 kilometres. Up at the front, Alistair Kavanagh was taking the hundreds of jumps on the route more cautiously than usual. With Gavin Lawrence calling the notes, they were still quick enough to claim second. Having eased in, claimed the fastest time to stage two. Picking up third place were Peter Horsey and Des Page Morris. Peter had just returned from the WRC circuit in Europe and the early kilometers on this rally were spent reacquainting himself with the African terrain. They were only 22 seconds behind the leader, which they planned to deal with later. After a disappointing season due to minor but time-consuming mechanical setbacks, Azar Anwar and Judith Kiki were proving that when it all goes well, they are strong contenders. After the first two stages, they were in fourth, looking forward to the long 60km section where Azar hoped he would have an advantage. An old hand at rallying are Hardy Bressi and Ravi Soni. Having only recently returned to the sport, they're using this year to settle back in. They are naturally quick and without fully committing themselves were already lying fifth, just over a minute behind. Yeah. 